What's up, everybody? We're back again. It's another episode of the Dad Bod Golf Pod. It's Kyle and Ben recording live from Bunkers here in Auburn Simulator Bar and Restaurant. Uh, I don't think it's called that. I, I like to call it that. It makes it sound, <laughs> it makes it sound good. Basically, our home course. This is our home course. This is Bunkers of Auburn. This is where we like to hang out. This is uh, We'll just go Bunkers of Auburn from now on. Uh, but we're ready to get after it, talk about these uh, protesters that took over. This is on the bag. That took over the uh, Travelers Championship. Uh-huh. Put people, I mean, some people feared for their life, and we're going to talk about that uh, as well. Scotty Scheffler wins again. Surprise, surprise. But before we do that, we got to give a shout-out to Bet Online, the number one sports betting website in the country. Sign up today. Use coupon code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V. Get a 50% welcome bonus on top of your initial deposit. Give them 100 bucks. They're going to stack 50 back on top of it for you to play with. You got MLB like crazy. You got some of the sports have kind of dwindled down, but if you can bet golf every single week. And then if you can't find a line you like, you can go hit the blackjack table in the online casino and have a lot of fun. Uh, easy deposits, easy withdrawals, bet online. It's where the game starts. So, Ben. Yes. Week after the U.S. Open. Yeah. Elevated event, which I think is brutal to, for them to have to. I think they've already gotten the point. Jack is moving his tournament, and I think they're going to move the elevated event after the, the majors. Yeah, you can't. They were stacked this time. Yeah. So you had like elevated event, U.S. Open, elevated, elevated event. That's a grind. Anyway, the Travelers, people go there. Uh, it gets a good, pretty good field regardless. Anyway, yeah, it does. So, but that was this weekend, and the headline should have been Scotty wins his sixth tournament before uh, July. Uh, and which second is, after April, which has never happened. And I think the July, six wins before July may be the first time it's ever happened. I know Tigers won six in a year. I got to check that. But I think it's either the first time it's happened in a really long time or the first time maybe it's ever happened. We'll go with it. Regardless. First time it's ever happened. Yeah. For, history books. <laughs> history was made. <laughs> but, no, the it, headlines. It'll help with the pod numbers. The first time ever. The, yeah. The we, headlines we The yeah. headlines were not about that. No. They were about the – are they oil protesters, climate protesters? What exactly, what kind of protesters are they? Woke. Well, no. <laughs> what are they protesting? I think it was something to do with oil. Oil, which is okay. Kind of, I'm just, okay, first off. No, we got, all right, let's tell the story first okay. before we dive into it. So, we're, we're say oil. I think it's fossil fuels, climate change, something like that. They, it happens everywhere. You see it, they go into like the, the they go like stow paint on the Mona Lisa, they, throw paint on monuments it's orange it's always orange they did it on stonehenge recently yeah they painted stonehenge with this orange it's, it's a very specific orange paint which i don't even know the significance behind it but they run out onto the green on the 18th green as the is it during the playoff like right as the playoffs no go, it's or the, the end of regulation because yeah. batia's out there with them so yeah we're he's, gonna talk about he's that on the hole with them <laughs> so they they unleashed their paint cannons or whatever it is and i will say security took care of business oh one security number two they should have learned when what's his name got tackled in canada last year yeah and that had one and that was and that was <laughs> and a, he was a golfer and that was a mountie tackling a golfer can you imagine like a real american super cop tackling a tagging some, some some uh kid with blue uh, hair with, yeah with purple of. hair that's out there <laughs> and so very unathletic never played <laughs> Never, never ran much. Never period. played a sport. Yeah. Uh, they, their their juke moves are not very good. No, it it's was not light on their feet. So. It was not an athletic exhibition. It um, was. Uh, they went down easy. They I mean, didn't break any tackles. First and foremost, how many of those people, when you saw them being carted off, looked like they hate their dad? Uh, <laughs> how many of them could you have could you have picked out of the crowd beforehand and said this guy might be a protest? Oh, the definite the <laughs> one with the t-shirt and the shaved head. That was painted blue. Oh yeah, with black shorts and the black shoes with the black I'll socks. Tell you what. I'm like, you know what? That's not a golf fan. Okay, I tell you what, <laughs> colored hair, that is colored hair when you're under the age of like 30 is a is a really 30 or 35, 40 something flag. like that is a big red flag. <laughs> blue and purple and red seem to be go tos. It is. Or like a, a shade of pink, like a magenta yeah. type. <laughs> Those seem to be go tos. Like that you went with the actual. Magenta, yeah, not, not pink, but yeah. I saw a funny post about that. I, well, I, I can't tell it on air, but it's it really funny for calling a color magenta. But anyway, but they actually got paint on the green. Yeah, they did. Like the grounds crew was, they, and here's the funny part. I leave the room, did not know any of this is going on. Come back in later, 
they're showing all the replays, and I have to go back and watch it because I go, what the hell is what what is happening? What has happened? Like what? Why is there paint on the green? Like do you what? remember? Do you remember years ago? It was Tiger, and he was playing in the Open, and they were throwing those. They're essentially like didn't want him to win, and they're throwing those paint bomb type things. Oh. Yeah. Out on the green. It's the it's the year I think he won with the two iron. He just hit two iron stingers the whole time. Yes. I don't know exactly where that was. If it was Carnoustie or Muirfield or I, I don't know. I don't know exactly. That's where the it one was. where he didn't land in a bunker all. Like, I think you're right. Two iron. He didn't. It was apparently everybody kept on talking about how you have to stay out of the bunkers. Well, he did. He didn't hit one the entire four rounds that he played there. So um, I got a couple questions. I got a couple questions about this. I got a couple questions about this whole protester thing. Okay. So number one. Okay, first off, before you get into that, okay, I'm okay with protesting. However, let's bring back the half-naked lady that went and chased John Daly around and gave him a kiss on the cheek. Is that was, it, was that protesting? She had something. Yeah, she was. She was the. You sure, it wasn't like BetOnline.ag. <laughs> no, you're thinking about that was when that started in tennis and then came about in golf a little bit later on the casinos. Yeah. She was doing something. She was like the kissing bandit or something. That's not and a she, protest. No, she did it. She's for, a serial well, kisser. Well, and she did it for a cause. Like she did to raise money for like some sort of cause or something. So I guess it wasn't protest. No, it's, let's bring that back though. Well, bring back the fundraising. How about right. that? <laughs> They're Let's trying the to protest. fundraise. Let's bring back the fundraising. All right. So here's my first question. Okay. Has there ever been? Could you count? What's the number of people that you think minds were changed by that that display? Probably, how many protesters were there? Six, I think. Yeah. Probably there are 12 parents that no longer like them anymore. Were they, were they changed, though? Are they changed to, to be against them? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. think that's what I'm saying. Like, I think, yeah, it's an embarrassment. Like, how many people, when they, when they throw paint on the green, throw paint on Stonehenge, are like, you know what? I'm I was. Not, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to sell. My, I'm going to sell my Hummer. That just, you know what? That just really opens my eyes. I'm going to sell my Hummer. I mean, I, honestly, I think that every time I see those guys, is I'm like, who didn't? Who, here's here's the funny part. My old roommate texts me on this. He goes, you know what's funny about that? It it was fuels because he said, here's the hilarious thing about the whole thing. They all drove there in cars. They had to. Have, say, some, <laughs> okay, like, they got and there they probably, somehow. If they weren't local, they probably flew there flew in a plane. There. Yeah. So, and were stupid enough to buy a ticket to get in and then did that to get kicked out and get arrested. The That's tickets are made thing. out of trees. Yeah. yeah. Paper from trees. If you've got paper tickets. So, but, uh, okay. See, so, see, yeah, I don't think they changed anybody. I don't think anybody did not fill up Monday morning headed to work. Or when they did, they got to the pump and go, ah, those dudes at the Travelers, they got me thinking. I'm. Mm -mm. All right, so here's the next second question. What is an appropriate punishment? What should What should you punish these folks? I got some funny ones, but I want to see what you – I think they're fun anyway. Um, force them to learn to drive an 18-wheeler. <laughs> <laughs> cross country. Yeah, cross country. Um, make them work on the fuel line at an airport, <laughs> filling up yeah. airplanes. Um, Self-serve gas pumps. That would, so, be, yes. that would be funny. Make them, make them actually pump gas for people. The full service, you know, with the windshield. You, took, you the stole windshield. one of mine. Yeah. I was yeah. going to say you had to take – uh, whatever the sentence is, so if it's like X amount of years that you would have in prison, you can you can reduce that by half. Yeah. If uh, or actually you could reduce it completely if you do half of it, you spend driving an 18 wheeler. Yeah. Uh, so cross country. So get their CDL. If you get a year, if it's a year in prison, you spend six months driving a seat, uh, driving an 18 wheeler, and and you're good. I th I think what they should do. Everybody's like, we're gonna ban them for life from golf. So. They don't. They, they're not. They've they went, never watched golf. Before. They went there to protest. They didn't go to watch the golf. Yeah, and it turns out they went to the wrong golf tournament. They should. If they wanted to have more people see it, they should have gone to the live golf tournament. Yes, we'll get to that. We'll get that in a little bit. But no, I think honestly, I think you hold them down and you take that paint, and you just cover their ass from head to toe. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about. They are orange. They look like the Nickelodeon sign. Yes. <laughs> they make but, them walk around downtown. Oh. Yeah. J Public displays. Instead of the orange jumpsuit, you're just orange paint. Head yes, to, yes. Absolute head to toe. I don't care if it's burning your skin. You better close your eyes. And you're make them pick up trash the rest of the PGA Tour season at every tournament. That's a good Painted one. Painted completely in that orange color. That's, 
whatever it is. Hope you, bu- you know, more than likely they have really sensitive skin, <laughs> so that's gonna it's gonna break them out. So it's not gonna be good. But I, I think you just go ahead. I think it'd be a good look for you. The black shoes, black socks, black shorts, white nah, t-shirt. Man. Can I wear? Can I top button the top button? You got. Yeah, you have to put magenta in your hair in order to do it. Okay. Okay. Right. I think I might be in. <laughs> I'll give it a go. I mean, I'm going through a midlife crisis, so I'll I'll might I'll try anything at this point in time. So hey, we're doing this podcast. Apparently, we are both of us. <laughs> but no, it was uh, incredible. I mean, it was electric. It was an electric. No, it was. Big shout out to all the security guards. I'm talking about. We're we're talking. They went ten for ten. There was oh. nobody. Nobody got away. There were some pretty. Uh, there were some pretty intense slams. Yes. Uh, they did not discriminate male or female uh, or. Whatever their pronouns were, they were taken down, and it was uh, they did not discriminate. So that's good. They were inclusive on yes. whipping a because <laughs> they got if, after. If you want to be treated equally, don't break the law. <laughs> they got I mean, after. What, you, they just it, you know it was just a few weeks ago. The number one player in the world got arrested. What do you think they're going to do to you? How nervous was Scotty when he saw the cops running out after his, these guys? His quote afterwards, when he won, was probably one of the most fantastic things ever. What do you say? Just. How, how well the police department there at the Travelers cooperated with everybody and did what they were supposed to do and did their job and didn't jump to any conclusions. Oh, and just <laughs> major shade? I mean, just major shade to, to Sergeant or Detective Gillis or whatever his name is that's, that's uh, back in Louisville. And uh, and he did it. He did it, like, in passing with his interview with Balionis. Yeah. And then, like, and then she, she did not. She said, back to you, back to you. Yeah, she she was, as soon as he said that, she was like, well, congratulations, and go spend time with your family. And so she completely backed out of that. But he did a a fantastic job on that. Speaking of which, he actually won, by the way. Yeah, Scotty goes ahead and wins again. Six six times before July. I've already said it's the first time in golf history. So we're going to go with that. I think it's, (laughs) I'm telling you, there's some kind of stat about it, winning six times before July. Uh, and it doesn't look like he's slowing down. And all, not only that, he won. So I don't know what this. I don't. I don't know what to take from this stat. But he won with like not just j- like as far as compared to the field. Yeah. Not crazy putting stats. Not crazy strokes gain stats. Mm-hmm. So what does that mean? He just he hit greens and made a few putts every now and then. He just didn't. He didn't miss a lot of greens. Like. He just was, doesn't make bogeys. I was limited what I watched, but he he didn't make any bogeys. See, that was the thing with Tom Kim, who was in the lead heading into the day, and Scotty, you know, basically came from behind. And the reason being is just because Tom was making pars, and Scotty, you know, when he needed to make a birdie, he would. And he just won't par a par five. No, and I mean that's what lost him the U.S. Open. I think. I mean, they talked about his stats on a par fives there. And I mean, granted, there's only two of them, but. I think you ended up being like seven over on the tournament on the par fives. I mean, that's ridiculous. That's just yeah. unlike him. So uh, now he granted those were turtle back greens in the U.S. Open, a little different here, a little flatter area, but uh, still for him to be in contention. And uh, I guess that's a cool thing too. Uh, apparently, I didn't realize that he and Kim were like really good buds. Uncle Tom. Yeah. Or, yeah. That's what she. That's and what uh, they call him. Yep. And that's what. Uh, what's his wife's name? I forget his wife's name. Meredith. Mich- Meredith Scheffler. Yep. She yep. calls him Uncle Tom. Uh, and so the baby's gonna call him Uncle Tom. Yeah, exactly. So super close. So I mean, and I think I saw one of the other, uh, maybe it was four player, somebody like that. It was somebody that that tweeted out and said, "This is what this is, maybe it was flushing. I think that's who it was. Is like this is what golf's all about: being able to play in a playoff with your buddy for all that's the marbles." That's your Sunday group. On so, yeah, that's Sunday, your Sunday group. Sunday group, and and you know, one of those things where you can't razz him too much because he still won. Tom still won a bunch of money because it was an elevated event or a signature event. I still like the word elevated instead of signature, but whatever. Signature yeah. events are the friggin' majors. Those are pretty signature. Elevated events are when the money used to be a million dollars to the winner, and now it's four million dollars yeah. to the winner. Uh, so that's why I call it an elevated event. But Scotty, Scotty's caddy has won more. I saw that stat has won more money than like eighty nine percent of the tour pros. Scotty's up to like twenty six million this year. Yeah, that's insane. And that Scott's like up to like nine million, ten million. I mean, could. If he wins the FedEx Cup, that's fifteen million. Yes. Is there a chance he could go like get close to hundred? I mean, he would have. To, we're we're over halfway through the season now, so so he could, if he just repeats what he's already done. 
No, I don't think he can. Be, I don't think he can get that high, but he could get the fifty. Because he's gonna get the pip. Oh gosh, that's that's another you know several million dollars. Then, you know, it's you, like it's like everybody said as soon as he got arrested. Congratulations on winning the pip. Yep, he's gonna dominate the. You're pip. in every basically lead story throughout the world. Yep, that's true. So, congratulations. Very good engagement. Yes. Very good engagement. Um, no, I mean he's gonna make close to probably close to fifty million in tour winnings yeah. when you count when you count the players championship if he went not the players the uh the cl- the tour championship if he mm-hmm. wins that the pip if he wins that and then if he wins two or three more times uh and wins a major you know whatever um or I, another elevated event I mean, or a gold medal or a gold medal he could win a gold medal what a year that would be what a year that be dude's playing unreal dude's gonna be so tired as i man. wish at the end of, at the beginning of the year i would just said you know what i'm just gonna put a hundred dollars every week on Scotty Scheffler to win, and there's, you'd be up, you'd be up massive, you'd be up big time. Oh, there's no doubt. I mean, because yeah. you, like you said, you would have caught some of those early six to seven to ones. Yep. And, and that would have paid for the losses, and then yeah. he's still gonna, he still can't be more than like plus one fifty or plus two hundred, which is still almost doubling your money. So I mean, if he'd have won the open, I, I did, I remember the line of that on the open. I think it was like. 13 or 14 to 1, but that's also because it's the largest field, so that's why it was up so high. Now, he didn't win it, but still, I mean, if you caught some of those early lines, like you said, that were like 12 or 13 to 1, bro. Yeah. So you would have totally it. paid. Totally. Yeah. You're cashing, cashing. Uh, one other thing about the, we kind of skipped it over it, uh, the, the protests. So, Scotty, awesome. Yeah. Back, back, protests, one thing. One of the funny things oh. was at Ashk Bataille gets interviewed and he says that he honestly feared for his life. He's kind of skinny. I think he could have ta- still taken him. There's no threat. There's no physical threat whatsoever from those. But from that group of people, there's zero physical I don't know, threat. Didn't they do a story on him, though, Kyle? Wasn't he like, and this, I really don't mean anything bad against anybody like Nate Pass in saying this. Wasn't he like homeschooled and hasn't ever had any friends? And <laughs> Like, I, I don't know. I it, think so. He just they, hasn't seen a lot. They've and and so he, I I'm, I just think like when he first came out on tour and he first went corn fairy. Remember he had the Instagram model and like it's because she asked him out like he didn't even know what he was doing. He had her. What's that? That didn't have anything to do with just being able to. No, but he just doesn't. He didn't. He didn't seen real world stuff, man. He's just played golf his whole life. I don't know. I think he could have taken these folks fairly easy. I think most people. That could walk and chew gum at the same time stood a pretty good chance. Akshay, next time you fear for your life because of protests, don't say it. Yeah, that, just that was not a good look. Just, just say congratulations to the security team for doing what we have them hired to do. Yeah, and leave it at that. Yeah, don't say I fear for my life over a blue-haired, white t-shirt, black shoe, black sock. Yeah. Combo or number combo. one, you're more athletic than them, so you can yeah. out you can outrun them. <laughs> yes, you can out juke them if you have to. You're then, holding a club, and then you're Use left-handed. It. You're left-handed, so oh, yeah. so you're a south ball, so they're never going to see it coming. No. So you can throw one, and they'll never see it coming. No doubt. Yeah. So, so Akshay. Yeah. Or highly, did. I, I I really loved you going in to this weekend. Kind of lost some points with me, man. Now I need, basically need to see you get in a UFC fight to have. <laughs> You know, to have any kind of, you know, he would, be, he would have the reach because he could still play with the, uh, the lightweight, the flyweights, and yeah. all those guys are like five two, and he's like six three. Exactly. <laughs> He'd exactly. Have the reach on them. Uh, all right. So obviously we're at bunkers. There's yeah. some good bunkers uh, specials that we're going to uh, let the girls. They're very, their segment was very popular last week. I have no idea why, but we're going to talk about uh, the stuff that's going on at bunkers. A lot of, a lot of fun stuff. And uh, you're they def- better not throw any shade towards me. Nah, we'll see. You're definitely going to want to hear it, hear about it. So uh, we're going to kick it to the girls, and we'll be back right after this. Back-to-back weeks, and they let us ha- have the mics? Back-to-back weeks. I think they're making good decisions here on this podcast right. by letting us come back. Um, viewership I mean, is up, It was I quite think. the hit. Like, yeah. We had fun. They had fun. We all had fun. You know, I agree. We might be back every week. That, I mean, comment down below who's better anyway, so. I agree. I, I, we might be biased. We might. We might be a little biased. But, I but mean, we do have a lot of fun here. So We have a lot of fun, and we have a lot of fun things coming up. We sure do. Mm-hmm. Two of which are Sunday and Monday. Start us off on Sunday. What do we have? 
Sunday, we have a Kona Big Wave Luau takeover. We're calling it a Lu Wow, I believe. Wow, a um, Lu Wow. Yes, very wow. Um, this is gonna be a family-friendly event. Um, no matter who you huge. are, come out. We have activities for everybody. We mm -hmm. have, I think, a little bit of something for everybody. Literally. If you just wanna come by and eat and grab a beer, if yeah. you have your kids with you and you wanna play some fun activities and games, for some prizes. Right. We have there's face painting. Face painting. There's games for big kids, little kids, all the kids. There's Hulu food. competition is for both oh, adults yeah. and kids. Oh, and and I and I already heard that you were doing it. So I'm I gotta see doing this. It. Um I might have to do some stretching ahead of time. Right. Um, you know. I'll get my face painted. Yeah. You know, I'll partake. As, as the late Toby Key said, we're not as good as we once were, but right. um, we'll get there. We'll get there. But I, what I also love is that kids can under eat and play for free, which so is that's crazy. So fun yeah. because then you can have all of your kids here and they can be playing while y'all are playing, and it's just it's gonna be a lot of fun. It's gonna be really hot outside on Sunday, and so this is gonna be a great place to cool off. We've got some like yes. cute little pineapple cups for all of our fun cocktails. We're very excited. There might also mm -hmm. be some tiki glasses as well. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah, they've curated a new bar menu, a new cocktail list, and a new menu menu for this it's event. It's all Hawaiian themed. So yeah. basically like when you come into Bunkers, you're not gonna recognize it. It's gonna be essentially a tiki bar. We're converting Auburn it all. Auburn went Hawaiian. Auburn goes Hawaiian, yeah, I like it. Like, and honestly, if you come dressed on theme, there might be a special something for you. We have lays. Um, like I said, we have games. We have you've so got all many the fun, fun prizes. prizes. I you have, have all, all the fun things. I, I can fit it all in my Jeep. So I'm really excited. Y'all are going to love them. Plus, then back to back on Monday night, we have a really fun event that we're launching, and it's for members of golf courses in the Auburn area only. And so being a member at a golf course, typically golf courses are closed on Monday for maintenance, and so we want to make sure that you still get your game in. And so members can come and get a $25 all-you-can-eat buffet, one free hour golf simulator, and $3 draft beers. So nice. I mean, no days off. No days off. Golf. And I don't know what's like, that's a fun way to spend your Monday. I so, agree. Sunday fun golf. day, Monday, Monday fun day. day. I like it. Tuesday fun day, you know, it's, it's going to continue. And plus it's like right in the heart of 4th of July week. So like if you're trying to get prepped before right. leaving for your 4th of July trip or, you know. And the best part is, is this month, what are, what are we calling it? We're doing member Mondays and they're happening every single Monday. It's not just this one. It's every Monday to come. All members bring in your member ID and come play a free round of golf. I love this. Right? I'm like, how could you not? I know. Like, Who needs Fridays and Saturdays when you have Sundays and Mondays? <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I don't know. We just I need prefer it, we, Sundays We need Mondays. to bring Hawaii to us every Sunday too. And I then, agree. I mean, I like it's it. Maybe be we'll just vacay. convert the bars to a, a Hawaiian theme. I mean, KJ will approve. Yeah, they all, they all will. Yeah. They're on board. Like, but you can wear your Tommy Bahama and yeah, just, you know, flip flops, tank tops. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Come in, dogs in or dogs out. You know, it really doesn't it. matter. So, dogs in and dogs out. <laughs> you got, got to, right? <laughs> well, uh, maybe we should return them. I really don't want to. I think we're having more fun anyway. I think we could keep going. Okay. Do you want to start talking about some golf now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it yeah. It is dad, dad bod <laughs> golf pod. So, right. Uh, but we don't have dad bod, so maybe we, we should don't. give it back to them. We don't. Although we might have just changed ourselves. <laughs> no. We'll hand it back to the guys. Welcome back to the girls talking about all the stuff that takes place as far as Bunkers is concerned. We do have a surprise guest that has made his way in. We kind of were hoping he would show up. And, uh, of course, we talk about how we're at Bunkers and we're at Auburn. Well, Carl Nunnemaker is going to make some time for us. So we're going to sit down with Carl. We're going to talk a little bit about Auburn baseball. Also, we're going to ask him the question that every golfer that played golf from the age of 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 on asked their dad. About baseball. Why, baseball and golf. Why can't I play golf in the summer, Dad? And he always says, because. And you know what the answer is, everybody. So uh, we're going to sit down with Carl Nunnemaker and talk a little baseball as well as a little golf, and then we'll wrap things Back. up. On it's Dad by the Golf Pod, part of the Believe family of networks, and uh, all sponsored by them as well as Bunkers. We're here uh, right across the street from Auburn University, but we do a lot of stuff Auburn-related, one of which Auburn baseball. Carl Nunnemaker joins me. Is, uh, is uh, Welcome, first off. Thanks for having me. You're a golfer? Yeah, I, I like to golf uh, for a few months a year. Can you kill it? I, I don't hit it that far. I'm okay, <laughs> but I, I, some of the younger guys hit a little further than me. So I told Kyle, uh, who co-hosts the show with me, that I said, I'm going to hit you with something because I was in school from 96 to 01. I know if you do the math, that's five years. That's a little longer than what you're supposed to be. Uh, it's easy to point that out. But then I still kind of hung around and stayed in the radio business and did PA when you were playing with Andy. Okay. And let me just tell you, 
we could not stand the fact that you showed up to play in Plainsman Park because we knew that you were usually going to have a big day. Did you did you own Auburn when you were when you were in school? I, I actually Auburn was tough. You know Auburn was known as really I mean it had great players, but there was a lot of good pitchers. You know I can remember, yeah. you know having you know Hayden Gleemo on Friday night oh, and Brent yeah. Shaning on Saturday and Chris Buchek on Sunday. Buchek, yeah. that that wasn't you know guys like that, guys like Steven Register, guys like it was. It was never a really easy weekend when you came to play Auburn. Yeah. Uh, so it, I don't have the, the best memories of, of the days against Auburn. Yeah, and a couple of those guys made it to the next level and even threw a little bit. So apparently they were decent whenever they were at Auburn. They definitely were. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it was always fun. There were there were a couple of different players in the Southeastern Conference that when I was a PA guy, I just dreaded seeing. Uh, <laughs> Furnace was another one. Uh, there just were a few few guys that you knew when they came to play. It was like, man, such a tough out. Yeah. such a hard, And that's – it, you know, it's it's one thing when a guy can, you know, can hit a home run every blue moon and you know you're going to get at least three strikeouts out of him. It's the hard outs that you hate watching as a fan because it's you're sitting there going, okay, nothing we can do can, can get, you know, can get past this guy. So he's going to put it in play. So uh, speaking of college baseball, and I know came up a little, you know, short this year, but um, is that a testament when you take a look at who the final four were in, in the College World Series? Uh, three SEC teams out of the Final Four. This is what you guys faced in and out every single friggin' weekend. And that's what makes you excited about coaching at Auburn. That's yeah. what makes it great to recruit players to Auburn. That's what makes you excited about uh, being involved in a season because one of the greatest things about this league is nobody will ever ask, you know, what if? Well, could you have done it if, if you were here? Or, mm -hmm. you know, this, this, this is an unbelievable league with great talent week in and week out, and the margins are – are razor thin and that that's what gets you up in the morning oh, wow. and and makes it exciting well let me ask you because we're in the middle of the off season here and so everybody will ask you everybody we ask every coach in the off season what are you doing of course you're going to get your typical you're recruiting you know one thing but it's a whole different story you've made the transition because you you were coaching pre nil and portal now you got nil and portal how things change in your guys's world as far as recruiting was yeah you know a lot of it's different just because you know, there's so many different ways that players could come to the program or leave. And you used to be looking at ninth and 10th graders and, you know, maybe you'd have a relationship for five or six years. And now you have a little bit more that can change closer to the time where they enroll. But, you know, a lot of it's still normal or the same in the sense that, yeah. you know, uh, you know, you have a lot of really good young players that come back. You know, you look at our roster, there's a lot of exciting players on mm -hmm. it that, you know, came in as freshmen mm -hmm. and are, are sophomores or juniors now. So, so that's exciting. So you're getting them off the summer ball. You're helping them with the summer class. You're, you're getting them going. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, you do have some guys coming in, and we've been busy trying to do that, just like any school mm -hmm. that's operating at a high level, trying to find the right needs and, and fit guys to your program and to your culture you know, the best that you can. Is baseball a, a sport that may have benefited a little bit? And the reason being is a uh, distant cousin of mine, Chad Wandel, played here. Mm -hmm. He was on, I, remember I don't know, a quarter of a scholarship, you know, and the rest of it was having to be provided by his family in order to be able to play. So now since you guys are limited in what you can put out scholarship-wise, maybe some NIL, you find some supporters, you find some donors, you find people that are friends of the program, it allows you to be able to maybe bring some players that you couldn't give a full ride to before but now it can be made up a little bit yeah the average baseball scholarship is somewhere between 35 and 40 percent See, that's <laughs> when you take 11.7 .7 and you can have up to 32 guys on scholarship mm -hmm. so that's something that's common for baseball is you know an out-of-state student it's not you know abnormal for them to have you know a ten thousand or twelve thousand dollar bill at the start of each semester mm -hmm. and and so now you have some ways to you know where they can help to cover that cost mm -hmm. and you know, there, there's times where NIL gets kind of how you hear about it, but there's also a lot of times where it's helping a kid to pay his bills and not leave with loans. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to ask you a question that every kid growing up wonders because their dad tells them golf will mess up your baseball swing. Is that true? Yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's a great question. I actually don't think so, but, you know, I was one that was fortunate enough that I hit lefty my dad taught me to play golf righty. Uh, and he said, you know, back in the mid-1980s, he said, "There's it's hard to find lefty golf clubs. I'm righty, I'll teach you. And I was so thankful for that. Yeah. Because you can go out and play golf with my dad on a Sunday and then have a high school baseball game on Monday. Yeah. And I didn't even have to worry, is this going to mess my swing yeah. up or not? 
there's guys that go out on off days in Major League Baseball and they play great, and I'm sure there's guys that don't want to tinker with their swing at certain times of the year. Yeah, it's you know, I, I it's funny that you you know you batted left and you and you play golf right. And since my dad does watch this, I give him a shout out. He was growing up, I always felt like I had the best of both worlds when I took batting practice. He was a baseball coach at one point in time. And he was ambidextrous, so when his, he was naturally left-handed, but when the left arm got tired, it, it used to freak people out because he became a principal, so he'd come down and throw batting practice every now and then to the team, and the team would be like, wait a second, he throws with both hands? I'm like, yeah, it's, yeah, you, I, trust me, I get to hear it every day at the house, and uh, especially when I'm not swinging very well, and he's like, all right, I'm going to turn around, you're, you're, still, you're staying in there, we're still going, uh, you know, 10 more, let's go 10 more, so... Uh, um, let's look forward to the upcoming season because uh, now that the you know the haze in the barn as far as this season is concerned and kind of I hate to use the word expectations I did that with head coach Nick Kleinard because you know especially with somebody like him he just won a national title in golf so you start talking about expectations and all his returning players their expectations are make it back to the natty and and match play but with you guys I know there's you know there's little goals start the season off right and probably get X amount of SEC wins slash make postseason play so let's talk about goals for next year and what you yeah. guys plan on doing I think that's one of the things that you love about being at a place like Auburn where anything can happen uh, I would just say you know you could use the word standard you know and replace that with expectation right like you know that the standards of what you're trying to live up to and what you're shooting for and you have a chance every year to play against the bet some of the best competition in the country mm -hmm. you have a chance that if you can take care of business with the teams that are in front of you you're gonna have a great strength of schedule you could have a great RPI and so Nothing changes for us. You know, every year where we, when we build a team, we're trying to build a team that can, that can have success in SEC play. And if you have a team that can do that, you can put yourself in a position in the, in the, in the NCAA tournament. I mean, there's been teams that have won a World Series, you know, mm -hmm. with a 14 and 16 record. Yep. Or you can go 20 and 10 and win the league and, and do it. But it's exciting to have people care about it. It's mm. exciting to see what's happened in this community that – you know, we had a year that we were not hoping to have. Right. And people still kept coming out yep. and supporting us because Auburn baseball is, is, is a proud tradition and the, and the people in town have rallied around us. And it's exciting to be in that. That's what we look forward to. Speaking of the support, as uh, we'll touch on this and I'll let you go, is uh, the, the facilities, every time I drive by, everything starts looking bigger and better than ever. And so uh, I'm sure, you know, the players, one, are excited, but I think the fans are excited to see what's about to come about at, at Plainfield. Yeah, just to see that home plate club this year, people could get, you know, climate controlled and seats right behind home plate and, and just a, a awesome more. awesome on television, too, by the way. I Watch was. It. <laughs> and then there was always the who's who uh, yeah. behind there. <laughs> and it was a more premium experience. Yeah. And just to have other areas like that in the park now where people can have that experience makes it really cool that if you live around here, you can drive. Uh, 10 or 15 minutes and come have you know a major league type experience and just we're excited for the atmosphere it brings I love how everybody feels like they're going to be on top of you yeah behind home plates right next to you that club seating down the right field line they're going to feel like they're hanging over the field mm -hmm. you already have the parking deck yeah uh, that's hanging over the field and now the the left field uh, yes. monster going to be hanging over the field and you already have the student deck out in right center yes. so it really feels like you know, almost like one of those old school basketball gyms where the rafters are above you. Yep. And uh, that's exciting to have people that close to home plate. We're excited about it. And whenever you're a baseball coach and you've got trucks and trains <laughs> and things like that at the field, that's always exciting because it takes a long time to make that happen. Yeah, I hate to give them kudos, but I tell everybody, one of the funnest places I've ever seen a baseball game was at Mississippi State, of course. And this was back before they even added the suites when all the campers and the grilling taking place out in the right and right center. I mean, it's, you know, that kind of fan experience is just unbelievable. So uh, here's to getting back to Omaha. How about that? Here it is. Yeah. <laughs> and here's to a dad that threw you enough pitches to where you couldn't swing anymore, <laughs> exactly. right? Exactly. Isn't that, that awesome? Was, yeah, that was it. And, and how I my golf game is what it is today because he told me it would mess up my baseball swing, even though we <laughs> just found out that that's probably not true. <laughs> Dad Bod, Golf Bod, back with me and Kyle here momentarily. All brought to you by Believe as well as Bunker. All right, we're back. That was Ben talking with assistant men's baseball coach, associate head coach. Associate head coach. Carl Nonamaker. Uh, I, loved, I loved how you caught, kind of caught him off guard with the, uh, with the baseball golf swing question. He had a great answer, and he now did. I'm mad. I'm about to call my dad when we get done. <laughs> be like, Carl Nonamaker said, y'all were scamming us and, and this whole time. Here's the thing. Carl could be a hit. Carl raked in college at Vandy, and, and – he, if anybody knows hitting, it's him. And the fact that he says, you can still play golf. 
and yeah. swing a baseball bat. <laughs> it's, it's, That's it's, big. They're 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 no, in no way, shape, or form related. And no. I'm sitting there going, my whole 16 to probably 19 years old was a big lie. Oh, I know, man. You could be pro, dude. You could be pro. Hey, really? It probably cost me. <laughs> You cost me a scholarship. It dude. Co- I mean, it definitely cost me a walk-on opportunity to be oh, somewhere. Oh, totally, <laughs> totally. You could LBW, dude. This, this right is the there. stuff I've been telling Grayson Huff about. He just doesn't know how good I could have been. Speaking of Grayson Huff, yeah, top twenty finish. Yes, uh, and and the Americas uh, uh, PGA yep. Tour of the Americas in can up in Canada, top twenty finish. His first start. That's, That's awesome. going to catapult him up in the uh, in the shuffle, get him a bunch of points, and then J M Butler. Yeah. Top ten finish in his very first yeah, it's amazing. event. Uh, form, both former Auburn golfers, obviously we follow their career really close. Uh, there was another event. We talked. Right, so we talked about protesters. We talked about yeah. the elevated events. There was a live event in Nashville, also the week right after the U.S. Mm-hmm. Open. Bryson's obviously there, and they showed some ticket. I think there was some ticket stuff out there, and the Friday crowd at Live vastly outnumbered. The, the Friday crowd at the Travelers. So it was like almost – it was 10-plus thousand people uh, difference. And I think – I think Saturday outdid them too. I flipped back and forth on Saturday, and I told you I ended up staying with Liv because Bryson was making a run, had three or four birdies in a row, and I was like, all right, I'm going to stay here. So I stayed on Liv Saturday and watched it, and uh, Party Hole was awesome. His reception – Was incredible. Unbelievable by the Liv players, by the fans – Hey, and big shout out to you, Nashville, because people were wondering if, let's just say it, Southern states. I know this is going to really make some Northern states mad, but Southern states are golf states. I mean, we in this particular golf area, we got golf year round. We got tons of courses we can play. Play with Kyle at his course. Got another buddy I play with his course. We got RTJ that's here. There's another pub, public local community, and then we got, I mean, within 30 minutes of any direction we got other courses that we can yeah, play so exactly this is a golf mecca that we live in and uh and so everybody was wondering when live made its way south how the southern golfers would take to it well they showed up and showed out in nashville so i uh, think the pga them. tour if they don't do something to get bryson back on television bryson there i mean he's already sort of stolen the name Captain America. I saw people yes. started calling him that yep. from Liv. Uh, I mean, he he is the needle right now. They, that may be – Bryson may be the blessing in disguise for this merger thing because the PGA Tour just has – in my opinion, I love Scotty. I think Scotty's great. They have no personality no. right now. They have no guy like that, that really – like people are going to tune in to watch. Even Scotty, man, he's, he's great, but he's got – not a lot of charisma, nope. kind of just it's boring. It's a very dry humor too. Yeah. As I said, he, he made that little remark. You in don't watch game. you don't watch Scotty and think what is he about to do? Like no, you're not wild. Yeah, I mean it, it's he he hits greens in fairways, which is great, and, and I like that. Yeah, but you got to have a, let's just call it a character. Yeah, they don't tour. have one. Um, you and I have interviewed one. Boo Weekly was that way when he was on tour. He used yeah. to, you know, when he went, even in the Ryder Cup, when he went to ride in his driver down the fairway after he, I mean, little things like that. Like, you know, the the old guys that are not watching podcasts that that will totally disagree with us, but you have to have, golf is fun, dang it. Like, yeah. there's a reason Kyle and I go out, and yes, we'll have a couple of beers, but we have a fun time, and, and there's music playing, and, you know, I think Liv could change some things. They could get some things with PGA Tour, but I think the PGA Tour could get a lot of stuff from Liv. The party yeah. hole is fantastic. And PGA got, goes, oh, we don't like doing that. Oh, really? Well, what about 16? You do have a party hole. Like, stop. Yeah. And and it's not out of hand either on Liv. Like, they limit how many people can be on that party hole yeah. so they can get out of hand. And so hey, there's just a, a lot of things I think both can take from one another. And Bryson right now, Kyle's right. He ain't moving the needle. He is the needle right now. He is must-see television as far yeah. as golf is concerned. So they got to figure that out or they're going to be in a world of hurt. So Before uh, he injures himself, before he – every golfer does not – people got spoiled with Tiger and Jack how they stayed on top for 10 years at the time. That yeah. that doesn't happen anymore. So while he's hot, they'd gotta, be stupid not to capitalize they on gotta, it. They got to figure it out. Got to figure it out. But, uh, guys, we really appreciate it. Hope you all enjoyed the uh, the, the – protester banter that we had 
Uh, you caught, you got caught up on the um, on the specials that are coming up. You got the Luau coming up next week. The member Mondays, that's going to be sick. If your club shut oh. down, your clubs are typically shut down on Mondays. So if you're a member of a local golf club, you come here. They're going to have all kinds of fun activities yes. for for local golfers, uh, if, especially if your club shut down. So. Uh, again, we really appreciate it. We're here every week, and uh, we're going to be back again next week, and we'll catch you again. So this is another episode of the Dab by Golf Pod. We're, we're always, always stroking. stroking. <laughs>